Okay, we're ready to do a little bit of papering on our wagon before we attach any hardware. So for the top paper here, we're going to attach it before we actually put our uh, closure pieces on. So I measured this, and you will need a piece that's, and I selected this piece with the wood. I think this is called the Stars of the Show. It's got a wood background with the stars. It's yellow on the other side. So whichever way you want papers you want to use, uh, you can do that. But I decided I wanted the stars. So this one is, you make sure you cut it 7 and 7 eighths long with the wood grain, and then 3 and 7 eighths wide. And we're going to do some inking on this. Try to do that real quickly here so we don't keep our videos super, super long. So I'm inking the cut edges of the paper. And then I'm going to glue it down. Like that. Got all my hardware pieces and brads and things here ready to go. So I'm going to position this on here. Where we have about, oh, just a very narrow little edge of black showing. Just put it on there straight. And then burnish that with your hands to spread that glue out. So that's the top of our circus wagon. Make sure you got glue on all the edges really good because we don't want it popping up here. So, whoops. Don't like it oozing out either, but okay, we get that good. It's going to be a hinge piece here on that. Now, then, for the back end, I'm going to make it the same. So, I cut that one. Let's see here. Yeah. This one is five, five and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So that's going to fit right there on the front end of the wagon. So we ink that one also, the cut edge. And again, I'm using the Tim Holtz black soot distress ink. If you prefer to use a brown color, that's entirely up to you. Then we can go ahead and do our sides, and I decided to use the chevron paper in the teal color here. So these are cut, you have two that are seven and seven eighths long by five and seven and seven eighths tall. So again, we're gonna ink the edges, the cut edges here. This little wagon, it really is easy to assemble. It just takes a little, you have to think about when to paper certain sections and, and everything. But otherwise, it goes together pretty quickly. And then you can decorate it up with um, different cutouts and elements that you have on the sides to make it really look like a circus. So let's position this on here. Remember the bottom's going to stay black. Then we're going to flip it over and do the other side, same size. Add some ink.
Okay, there we go. We've got that covered. And now we're ready to do some hardware attachment. Let's see. I think first on um, this we need to paper the outside piece of the wagon gate. And I'm going to make it the same as the top and the other end. So I've cut this one four and an eighth wide by five and seven eighths long. I'm going to ink this one. The reason we go ahead and put that on before we do our hardware is because we want the hardware to show on this side and then we'll wait to paper the inside because we want to cover up the legs of our brads which is part of what holds these uh, the hardware on. So this is the side I want to attach. really cute. Okay, now we're ready to do some marking and um, attaching. So this is the decorative hinge piece and it's going to go here at the bottom. So I centered it and use some type of white pen on the black paper and put your dots. And then we're going to take crop a doll and use the small hole punch and punch these three holes. So I've got to open up the hole there so I can see through there. So you look down through the hole and find that white mark in there. kind of thick so it's kind of hard to get it on there the way it should be. Okay. Kind of hitting them too far in here. See if I can get these to work. Thick chip chipboard is staying inside the hole there, it's clogging it up. There we go. on there and see how that does. Now then we're going to have to use, this is the bottom so make sure you have it turned the correct direction. Okay, I think that will work. I may have to poke, punch the holes a little bit more in. Yeah, that's better. where I can see where the hole is. Let me see my markings. Apologize for this. It's you ever have one of those days where Murphy's Law and it's a tool or something not working right for you? That seems to be the today. Okay. Better there. And that one left some chipboard in there. Now I know the holes are a little bit bigger than I wanted, but I am going to glue this so it's going to be okay. Now the brads that we're going to use need to be the longer legs 
to make sure it holds it. I found these, they're hard to find, but I did get the 10 millimeter black Basil Basics paper brads. And that is going to fit here. And then the brads are going to sit down into it like that to hold it on. But we do need to glue uh, this metal hinge piece to make sure that it does stay good. So I'm going to get my quick grip glue. And it is a messy glue. When I took the lid off, it just tends to ooze everywhere. So I'm going to take that off, put on this plastic sheet so that I can you know, put some glue around each hole and then in between a little bit. I'm going to try to keep it from oozing out a whole lot. I'm going to take these brads out and then position this. I'm going to do the center one first the legs through and drop it in there like that. That way you have time to kind of straighten it up and then get the other two. Oops. And then the third one. So that glue is going to help hold it in. So I'm holding that. Keep them flat. Turn them so that they kind of go side, the legs go side to side. And open the legs up. You can have glue on them so it's kind of messy. You just don't want the legs to poke out over into the hinge. So open those up and hold it to keep it straight. Make sure you straighten it up because it will slide around some. See, I did get glue. But this kind of glue can be rubbed off with this gummy thing after it dries, so that's no problem. So hold it down and let it dry. And that's the bottom. And we're going to have it like this. So flip the hinge up. Fit your little gate door on there. And you can use a regular pin, I think, for this. And mark those holes. Okay, now we need to punch those. Punch that one with the big hole puncher. Didn't mean to, but I think it'll be okay. Turn around on the other side here. And the last one. Oops. Don't like that when I say oops. <laughs> Now then, this flips down, center that over that, okay, so we're going to need a little glue, um, I'm going to put it on the holes onto the door, but in between, and let's fit that over that. Grab 
cut those brads and drop them in. Just three brads again. I'm going to hold it for just a few minutes and let that glue maybe grab on there for a few seconds here. Keep it the brads in tight and then go ahead and open up the legs. Turn them side so they go side to side so they won't poke off the end of this little gate piece. Gluing myself together here. Put that down. And don't worry, this is going to be held shut with another piece. Okay, let's recap the glue. And that's the little hinge piece with the nail brads in there. I call them nail brads, they're really just regular brads. But now, though, we need to do this closure piece. Now, this is a piece that, like I said, I bought at Home Depot, and I'm going to try to get enough of them to include them in the kits, but they're flat because the brads are um, a little bumpy, a little thicker here than this piece. You have to take a pair of pliers, it's really, really easy, I figured this out, and just grab it here and bend it towards, I put it over my finger and just slightly bend it. It will bend and it gives it a slight curve. Do you see the curve? This will make the piece sit down over those brads. So first of all we need to position where we need the hinge piece of that to be and we're to attach this piece they call this the the hasp hasp piece so you want to make sure that the um, hinge here is to the top and outside of your gate thing here and I'm going to mark these three holes one two Three. Okay. Pressure. Where's my? I need something heavy duty to poke this chipboard out of this hole. There we go. All right. I may get my head in the way. Apologize if I do, but I'm going to go in for it. There's one. this. So we need to add some of that wonderful quick grip. It's the best I have found to use so I like the quick grip and put it in the holes and in the middle here. Great thing about the glue is that you can move it in a, or maneuver it around the piece after it's on to get it straight. Need three brads. Put them in. There we go. 
these are almost a little bit too big but they still look okay I, I need these bigger ones for the longer legs to make sure this all stays stuck and then you can straighten it after it's in there again hold them and turn these so that the legs are going horizontal with the front of the box, the wagon here, so that they don't stick out. Press them down really good into that glue. There we go. Do that straight, and then this piece comes up. And that's going to go over it and now we need to put in our little holder piece okay this one's going to go lift up your hasp and position this this is a little bit tricky you want it to match up and then not move can I see that on the video so I'm holding it with my thumb then I stick this underneath to hold it while I lift this out of the way. And we're going to mark the hole. Now this is where it gets a little bit trickier on your holes because your punch is not going to reach down here. I don't think unless you get the really big one. Mine will not reach. So I have a drill. Yes, my husband bought me a drill told him I needed a little drill. I didn't want a real expensive one. And we go to Home Depot and he insisted on buying a $99 drill versus I think a $29 drill. For me, I think the logic was that if I didn't use it, well then he would use it would take it to his shop. He has tons of drills. He doesn't need it. But I wanted one that was nice and clean and lightweight and that would drill good. So I'm going to drill into this cardboard. Keep your fingers clear. And actually I like using this better than I do the uh, punch. But I know all of you are not going to have a drill. So for this second hole, you may have to take like your Brad Pisser, Pisser, excuse me, Brad Piercer and poke in and poke the hole through and that would probably work for you, okay? Oops there, slip of the tongue. <laughs> okay. Get two brads for that, the glue, put it around the hole, so this will help hold that brad in, and then, whoops, it's oozing, some right there, and then, let's position this piece here, and drop those brads in. Why am I? Why did I put glue in the middle? I don't want glue in the middle. I'm going to have to get that off of there. Don't put glue in the middle because it doesn't attach down in the middle. <laughs> okay, I got it off and I'm going to use that eraser thing to, to get some of it off. So let's just move this around and stick this down and check it. Okay. And then we're going to open up our legs, prongs of our brads. Yay! This part is over with. Let's get that over. All right, double check it. And it latches. Okay. All right, we can put this sticky glue. Well, no, we're gonna need it for our wheels probably, so let's just wait. So I cut the backing paper for the gate and it is four inches by five and seven eighths and we need to ink it up. 
on the cut edges. And I'm using the wood grain, which matches the star paper, but it doesn't have any stars on it. I kind of thought, well, this kind of looks like a, a ramp, which is what it's going to be once the wheels are on. So I'm going to glue this down. another piece of black cardstock here somewhere I thought. Just center this over it. And kind of press down around where the brads are. Okay. Now let me find my piece of cardstock that I cut. Maybe I didn't cut another one. Okay, measure. And it's going to be down in the lid here, black. So it's seven seven eighths by. Let's go with three and three quarters. Seven and seven eighths by three and three quarters. I'll be right back. Fit, dry fit it so make sure it fits in the top. Add your glue. Put that down into the top on the inside. Make sure that it comes over the brad so it should fit just right along the edge here of the wagon here. Turn it over and burnish that in. Oh yes, I put the paper down and I haven't done the wheels. Lift it up quick. <laughs> Quickly. Okay. For the wheels. I covered up my holes for my wheels. Oh dear, dear, dear. Let's see. I think we can find them. Should have punched those out. Where's my Brad Piercer? So this is the bottom. No. I'm so wrong. I put the paper on and I shouldn't have on the other side. Ah! Okay. Put glue back on this. I was correct on this piece. I was incorrect on the other piece, so I'll have to put a correction on the video. I guess you'll notice that I have to do that quite a bit. Corrections on the video part about putting that piece down. So let's get this one on. So this was right. This is the one that should not have been put down. I'm going to try to peel it up if because I don't want a double thickness there. And if it will peel up, good. Then I can still use it. Yay! Okay, wheels. Let's close up our wagon. See how that when it's bent, it helps it to stay closed. And let's Turn this over. I'm hoping it's not too thick that the screws will work fine through this. This is a double thickness of uh, chipboard. So I'm just checking this screw and then I'm going to try to pull it back out. I think my screwdriver I was trying to see how well it fit down in there. And it fits so good that now I'll probably have trouble getting it out. But there we go. Just making sure the holes work and I'm hoping that I have enough length to um, not have to glue the wheels on. I'm just making these holes, make sure they're 
open up big enough. Okay, now let's open the door and position the screw down into the hole and let's see how long it is. See that's the problem, they're not very long and this is a double thickness of chipboard. They're just supposed to screw on like this. So let's see if we have enough to tighten it. Yep, that one did. Okay, the next one. I'm gonna have to add some more glue on that piece of paper. Now let's check this wheel. And you want to screw them until they're like going up and down here. Now then, way, way back south is this other one, other two. Yeah. Felt like something was covering it up, but I don't think so. Now look, if I had put them in before attaching everything, I wouldn't have ever been able to get them. They would have fallen out on me. I'm going to Let's see about poking that in there. my husband were doing this, he would probably do it right away. Just no problem at all. That one I got. I may have to cut out some of that paper that may be in the way. Let's see. I need to change hands. I gotta have my right hand. Here we go. I'm off camera, Annie. Let's see. Let's stick it down on there. Twist it, screw it around, there we go, ah, 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 yes, no more, straighten it up, love these Tim Holtz wheels, okay, one more, Whew. and these will still roll, now, you're making a circus wagon, it is not for children, okay, Gotta be very mindful of this, that it is not, not a toy. This one here. It doesn't like me. It does not like me at all. I may have to get my drill out. Ah, I did it. Okay. See if we can get this one on without having to use glue. Sometimes I think in another wagon that I made, the other one I made, there was one that would not screw on. So sometimes I think maybe the little screws are like a millimeter shorter, whatever, not millimeter, but whatever, just a smidge short because it would not screw on like this one. And it should. It's sticking out the same thickness as the others. If you run into this, 
what you're going to have to do is take a little bit of that glue. I'm just I'm determined to screw this in. We're going to keep trying. Now there may be. I wonder if there's some paper underneath it. I'm going to scrape away the paper. Put that back up in there now. Now I took it out. It's just not long enough. So, and I don't think hammering it into it will do it. So, I'm going to take glue. I don't want to, but I'm going to. I don't have the patience to. Frustration to deal with the frustration. So, I'm going to put glue here really messy stuff but it holds I'm just filling it in letting it go into that hole and then position it so that to make sure it's going the right direction but we don't, we don't want it going the wrong way and we're gonna have to let that dry Trust me, it will hold. The 6,000 will hold. You have to put something under there to kind of brace it up. What do I think I that would hold? Hold it up. me I guess so I'm going to turn off the video and hold on to this till it dries and take a break get me something to drink and then we'll be back <laughs>